All right, so um, kind of jumping in here to uh, tell you guys about how my consultation went with Dr. Watt. So um, as you may or may not know, I'm having phalloplasty, RFF phalloplasty with uh, Dr. Chen and uh, the Bunky Clinic, which is um, going to be uh, Dr. Watt and Dr. Safa. They're the microsurgeons and Dr. Chen is like the urology part. Um, so um, I had the consultation yesterday and um, previously, uh, four weeks ago, I had surgery right here uh, to take out a ganglion cyst that was wrapped around my um, radial forearm artery and it also caused carpal tunnel. And um, I told him about this and um, my doctor had tied off the artery right here in order to get this ganglion cyst out. Well, when I told <laughs> Dr. Watt that, um, he was like, well, he, he doesn't feel comfortable going into the unknown. Um, so he suggested that we use my dominant hand. So I'm going to use my right hand. That's the big, woohoo, big surprise. So, um, he says uh, it's not that unusual for people to ask to use their dominant hand for um, a variety of reasons. Um, some are musicians and, you know, they don't want, you know, this hand to be affected. You know, they're playing the guitar, I guess. I don't know. But at any rate, um, he asked uh, what I did for a living. And I said, well, I'm retired and hey, I'm, I'm easy. So uh, my tatted tiger is now going to be, you know, minimally tatted. So, and um, anyway, so that's that's that. Um, he's very nice. Um, let's see. I wrote some notes down so I so I don't forget um, to go over some, you know, things that you might be interested in. Um, so we totally like explained the procedure after asking me some basic questions like. Um, uh, when I started my transition, when I started testosterone and, uh, and how my dose was doing and all that kind of stuff. Um, so prior to this, now I had metodioplasty with vaginectomy, a UL, um, and scrotoplasty. And I had this done last year, um, not thinking that I was going to get phalloplasty, but as the world turns, you know, um, I am going to get phalloplasty. So, um, he, uh, has said that, um, you know, I've basically gone through like a lot of the hard part, you know, that's going to be for the recovery pain wise. Um, so, um, I asked him about, uh, being on the thinner side and he didn't seem to ha say there was going to be a problem with, you know, getting good size girth. Um, not huge, but, but I don't want to be huge, you know, so just, you know, like an average size girth. And, um, he said we can do fat grafting, um, of the penis afterwards if need be. A lot of time the fat just kind of reabsorbs and it doesn't work, but, um, that's something that might happen down the line. We'll see. Uh, let's see. He asked me like what my goals for surgery were and he asked me to rate, you know, one, two, three, um, aesthetics, um, stand to pee, um, or sensation. And so I kind of told him, you know, what was most important and, you know, um, <clears throat> but, uh, basically, uh, you know, he's saying that all of these are going to be achieved, you know, that's his goal anyway is to uh, let me have sensation and, 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 and it look like a, you know, a beautiful cis man penis and, and I'll be able to stand it to pee. Um, let's see. Um, so, uh, so what a flap is. So they take like this flap of skin and um, it's actually a block of tissue with a blood supply. Okay. So that's what, that's what a, flap is and um let's see the radial forearm flap um for some reason he said gives you a better sensation um he likes the the arm too because uh it's thinner than the thigh and it's more 
able to, you, you can roll it twice, once to form the urethra and then a second time to form the actual phallus itself. Um, so uh, he was kind of, you know, encouraged by encouraging me that I chose RFF. That's just what he was doing. So um, he didn't say I couldn't have any other surgery, but he, he told me the reasons why um, he thought that RFF would work better in a lot of uh, sensation, a lot of uh, situations. Um, so yeah, so there's a very good, reliable blood supply in this arm. Um, the t it tends to heal better um, and with lower uh, complication rates than the alt phalloplasty. Um, nerve regeneration uh, usually happens between uh, one and one and a half years, so it can take a while. Um, but he says that um, 90 to 95 percent of his patients get erogenous and tactile sensation. So that's a pretty good percentage in my opinion. So, uh, electrolysis, uh, he looked at my arm, you know, what, from what he could see on the camera and, um, I'm not very hairy at all. Uh, so he said just to concentrate mainly on, um, the underside and anything that's left over, you know, I only have until March to get this done. And I had already been doing electrolysis on this arm. So, um, he says anything uh, on the outside that's left over, I can get done uh, post surgery. And I already talked to my electrolysis about it and she's cool with it. And I was just like, you know, she's already seen my penis because you know, she's working on it, you know, taking the hair off. So it's just gonna be down there. So I'll just have to get over my embarrassment. I think it'll be okay. Um, also, um, they take, when they, when they take the, the, they, they do a full thickness split graft, okay? And they take that from your thigh, and it's the opposite thigh of whatever arm you're going to use. So I'm using my right arm, so he's going to take it from my left thigh. And um, with, with he, he said that he doesn't tend to use Integra unless you specifically ask for it. He says that with Integra, it doesn't always adhere. You lose some of your, your graft. So so some parts will look really awesome and then other parts might look not so awesome. So he says it. he doesn't really, um, you know, think it makes a difference. That's just what he says. <laughs> so, um, and also uh, people that are on the thinner side have less of a ledge, you know, so, so, um, it'll be more of a smoother look than, than having that little drop off that people actually have to get fat grafting into that or, or whatever they do to make it, you know, look smoother, you know, and no ridge. So, um, so yeah, uh, let me see if I missed anything else. Um, most of the complications, he said from phalloplasty, um, arise in, ar uh, uh, I can't speak, <laughs> come about in the um, urological parts of it. So um, the most of the con complications are where the new urethra is attached to my existing urethra at that attachment part. And that's where you can develop um, a stricture or a fistula. Um, but so most of it is urological. Everything else is just a process of healing. So, uh, so yeah. So, so anyway, that's just my update. Uh, it's already been almost 10 minutes long enough. Uh, if you lasted that long. <laughs> so, um, if anything else now, now they're going to start the insurance process. Uh, I think they're going to start that in January. They, have, they do it three months before the surgery. Uh, so, you know, if anything else comes up, I will update you guys. If you have any questions, just leave it right there down below and I'll, I'll answer them. Okay. Thanks for listening. Bye.